This word comes, uh, this point comes from just one word in verse 4 where, where Luke says that he wrote this for most excellent Theophilus. The well, question's pretty easy on this one. Who's Theophilus, right? Like, what's he talking about? First, it comes across kind of funny. He mentions Theophilus both in this book and in his Acts book that we read the introduction to. So here's the deal. Um, experts, scholars, good Bible studying pastors and whatnot, they've basically boiled it down to three different things that this Theophilus could be. First is that Theophilus is a high-ranking Roman official. That sort of preface, most excellent kind of lends to that. We know that Theophilus was a common first century Greek name. If that's who Luke's talking about, then, uh, then maybe that's who he's dedicating this book too, you know, like you see the dedication of a book in the beginning of a page, or maybe he's a friend who's become a Christian, he's writing this to him, or, or perhaps maybe even he's sending it to this Roman official in hopes that he'll propagate and publish the book so that many, many people can read it. Um, either way, it's clear that Luke, he wasn't writing just this uh, personal correspondence between him and Theophilus. He writes in such a way that it's clear he means for hundreds of people to read it. He means he's writing for a wide audience. Uh, not just for Theophilus to read the story and impact, be impacted by it, but many. Second option, a Theophilus is code for a group of non-Jewish Christians. Uh, with this, uh, you know, you see with the word Theophilus, it's what's called a portmanteau, and that's where you take two separate words and you mash them together and you make up one new word. So the first part of Theophilus, theo, it comes from theos, the Greek word for God. And then the second part, philos, comes from the Greek word for friend, which is philia. And so you put them two together and you have God friend or friend of God. Now, when Jews, non-Jews converted to, to Judaism, they used to call them God-fearers. They call them God-fearers. Now, nearly all the first Christians were Jews. But when some who weren't Jews, like Luke, he was one of the first Gentiles, non-Jews, that became a Christian... When they, when they became Christians, they often started referring to themselves not as God-fears, but, but God-friends, friends of God. There's all kinds of debate about when Luke was written, but if it was written late, like after the persecution and killing of Christians had started, some think maybe that Luke was using the word Theophilus as code, like he's, he's writing to this secret group of, of Christians that had huddled together, and so he wants to get the story of Jesus and what happened to them. Okay, so that's second option. Here's third option. That Theophilus is an invitation to believe. When you sit down and you, you read through the Gospel of Luke, there's, there's one big thing that just clearly stands out to everyone who reads it. If, especially if you read the, the other Gospel accounts, Matthew and, and Mark and, and John first, which, by the way, I just want to encourage all of you to sit down and, and do this, to sit down and read through all of Luke in one sitting, you know, sometime this year in our study through Luke, right up here in the beginning, like this week would be a great week to do it. It'd take you about two hours, not long, but it's, it's a great book. It's a page turner. You'll like it. Um, that's actually how the story was originally intended to be read, to be read all together in one sitting. And, and one of the reasons why it's really helpful to do that is because when you do that, you'll pick up on some things that you can't pick up if you're just reading little bits at a time. And one of the things that you'll pick up if you do that will stand out to you is that Jesus, throughout the book, is constantly reaching out to all different types of people. People who are alienated either by society or because of their own sins or whatever. He'll reach out and, to, and befriend anyone. In Luke's gospel, he's just, Jesus is constantly reaching out to people and attempting to bring them near, to bring them home to God. He brings the lost home. Luke's portrait of Jesus is really unique in that he's reaching out to all different types and classes of people. He reaches out to sick people, healthy people, rich people, poor people, religious people, irreligious people, women, men, children, different races. He goes in all kinds of different places. He's reaching out to all kinds of different faces. Luke's gospel, Jesus is the Jesus is who is for everyone. In light of that, what many have suggested is that Luke is using this word Theophilus as an invitation to read the story and to become a friend of Jesus. Luke cares about 
writing factual history and it being true. We've talked about that. But at the same time, he's writing to try to persuade anyone and everyone that they could become friends with God through Jesus. That's his goal. And what he's saying, that's the most excellent, best life that you can have. It's an invitation to believe, to become a friend of Jesus. So those are the three options. That is a Roman official, the code for a group of non-Jewish Christians, or it's an invitation to believe. So which one is it? Well, what do you think? I don't know. That's what I think. I don't think it matters. <laughs> um, here's what I think does matter. Regardless of who Luke is referring to, his intention with the story with Theophilus is that whoever it is, he wants him to read the story in hopes that will not only become convinced about the events of Jesus' life, but through that, enter into a relationship with God. And I don't think that there's perhaps a, a better way. It's one of the best ways to describe what it is to be a Christian and to be in relationship with God. It's being a friend of God. Becoming a friend of God. Due to our own inner faults and failures, even just our own brokenness, we've all distanced ourselves from God. And what happens is we really make ourselves enemies of God. And we're lost because of it. What if, though? What if? What if the story of Jesus is actually true? What if Jesus not only came and, and lived and reached out to all those people back then, but died and rose again and still is today and is still reaching out to people? What if he's... He's reaching out right now to people in this room, reaching out to you, reaching out to people in our city. What if Je through Jesus, those of us who are lost and have been enemies of God, that we can be found and become God's friends? What if? What if? 